Hey internet friends, would you rather have money, fame, or truth? What if, to be in front of the pretty lights and cameras, you could never disclose what goes on behind them? To be the brightest star, would you keep Hollywood's darkest secrets? Or would you speak up? Someone has made their decision, setting off a domino effect of allegations, rebuttals, and yes, perhaps, even some change. That's why today we're going to shine a light on what's taking place, and has been for quite some time. But instead of just reading headlines and listening to sound bites, we're going to pull back the curtain. Because something strange is happening to Hollywood, and it might not be what you think. Congratulations, you five ladies no longer have to pretend to be attracted to Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> the concert promoter turned film producer and co-founder of Miramax Films. Harvey Weinstein is at the center of Hollywood's undoing, with a growing list of leading ladies accusing Weinstein of sexual harassment or assault. The incredibly well-connected film producer has responded by saying that many of the allegations against him are false. While his spokesperson went on record stating that any allegations of non-consensual sex are unequivocally denied. Among the actresses who've accused Weinstein of sexual harassment or assault are Rose McGowan, Kate Beckinsale, Gwyneth Paltrow, Angelina Jolie, Ashley Judd, and as recently as yesterday, Cara Delevingne. Longtime co-worker Meryl Streep called Weinstein's behavior inexcusable and an abuse of power, claiming that she didn't know of his offenses. Keep in mind, this is the same Meryl Streep who said this about Roman Polanski, a Hollywood film director and producer who was arrested at actor Jack Jack Nicholson's house for the sexual assault of a 13-year-old girl. Um, yes, uh, Roman Polanski. <clears throat> I'm very sorry that he's in jail. There's a mounting fear that Weinstein will pull a Polanski. That is, leave the United States to dodge prosecution. As Weinstein commented just the other day that he was due to head to Europe for sex rehab. You know, because normal people have to face the legal system if they're accused of rape. But the rich and powerful? No, rehab will do. Jail is for poor people. For the last three decades, Weinstein has reached at least eight settlements with women who accused him of sexual harassment or abuse. So the question is, why now? Why is Hollywood throwing this guy under the bus when accusations of casting couch sexual abuse, as well as child rape, have been flying around for quite some time? With the only difference being no one before was naming names. Not to the press, anyway. Perhaps we've learned all that we need to from Weinstein, the fall guy. Perhaps the answers we seek remain hidden by those who have been covering up for him for decades. Let's take a look at Harvey Weinstein's most outspoken accuser, Rose McGowan, who recently got banned from Twitter for taking aim at one of Hollywood's darlings, Ben Affleck, accusing him of knowing about Weinstein's behavior for years and also alleging that he lied about doing something about Weinstein's behavior. Additionally, McGowan called Affleck's longtime buddy, Matt Damon, a spineless profiteer who stays silent. But are Ben Affleck, Matt Damon, and Harvey Weinstein really all just spineless Hollywood perverts? Both Ben Affleck and Matt Damon were no-name actors prior to Goodwill Hunting. But here's a picture of them with former President of the United States, Bill Clinton, the day Goodwill Hunting was released to the general public, distributed by none other than Weinstein's Miramax Films. Also of note, Damon's character in Goodwill Hunting is being recruited by the NSA. Could it be that Affleck and Damon are a little more connected than their humble, struggling actor beginnings led on? The answer is yes. Absolutely a million times yes. Finding Your Roots, a program that aired on PBS, looked into Ben Affleck's roots and revealed that his story of being a middle-class guy from Boston, raised by a single mother, was a bit of a misleading tale. Barely mentioned on the show was Affleck's grandmother, Elizabeth Robert Shaw, who married a guy she met at college by the name of O'Brien Bolt, whose best man was Tom Braden, a man who worked for the OSS, which was like a, a really early version of the CIA. Braden then held a prominent role in the CIA, specializing in using art and film as a means to spread propaganda. Braden even snagged Ben Affleck's grandma a job at the CIA front known as the Museum of Modern Art, working alongside her. Ben Affleck's mama, Chris Ann Bolt, wasn't just any single mama. 
She attended Harvard and worked alongside the offspring of other CIA spooks. Which brings us full circle to Ben Affleck. After No Name Ben Affleck watched the premiere of his not yet popular film Good Will Hunting, with then President Bill Clinton at Camp David, he played a CIA analyst in the film The Sum of All Fears. Reported in The Guardian, there was a real CIA agent on the set, advising the actors as they shot the movie. That same CIA liaison went on to advise the set of Alias, the star of which is Jennifer Garner, Ben Affleck's former wife. Basically, all the women in Ben Affleck's family are connected to the Central Intelligence Agency. And we haven't even gotten to spineless profiteer Matt Damon who has played CIA or NSA-related characters in Good Will Hunting, four Jason Bourne films, The Good Shepherd, and Syriana. Though Matt Damon has a similar origin story to Ben Affleck, he presents himself as a middle-class guy from Cambridge who happened to attend Harvard, where he became a member of the elite Delphic Club. Even though he was supposedly just a middle-class theater kid who missed a bunch of class time due to pursuing film roles, even going on record as saying that he was yanked out of class to pursue these roles, as though he had no say in the matter. There is an excellent essay I have listed down below that details and sources all of this information about how Ben Affleck and Matt Damon were anything but struggling actors from middle class families. They were both born from elite families with a spider web of connections to the CIA. Do you reckon these connections were severed when they made it big in Hollywood? Together, Matt Damon, Ben Affleck, and Harvey Weinstein make quite the trifecta. Hollywood serves as the conduit through which the United States government promotes its propaganda. Harvey and his brother Bob founded Miramax Films, which Disney bought in 1993. During World War II, Walt Disney Studios created 75 training films for the military, and it's documented that the U.S. Army took over Disney's studio space during this time, and they never really left. Consider the programming that Disney, as well as all of Hollywood, cranks out. Consider the propaganda that Matt Damon and Ben Affleck have been a part of. Is Hollywood operated by the American government and the Israeli Mossad? The CIA and Mossad were created within a year of each other, post-World War II. So when people say that Hollywood is run by Jewish people, it's true. Woody Allen, Roman Polanski, Steven Spielberg, Harvey Weinstein, they all churned out propaganda that shaped popular culture, manufactured consent, and ultimately romanticized war. And if you bring up this fact, you're automatically labeled anti-Semitic. I'm sure some of you are already pounding away on your keyboards right now. It's kind of like how before the Weinstein scandal, if you were a celebrity who brought up the concept of the casting couch, or said that pedophilia was rampant in Hollywood. You were an attention-seeking D-list celebrity. Or if, as a normal person, you echoed those same sentiments, you were just a conspiracy theorist. Weinstein gave many actors their start to their careers. So it's fitting that actresses like Rose McGowan will bring an end to his career by illuminating his behavior, if he is indeed found guilty of these allegations. She's chipping away at the pyramid, and at the top of that pyramid are individuals who select people who are easy to control by exploiting their perversions or their desires, blackmailing them and manipulating them. So as this Hollywood saga unfolds, it's important to consider that Harvey Weinstein might just be the fall guy, and lots of predators might still be out there. I'm going to leave you with a few questions. Is the Secret Service so inept that they couldn't figure out all of this information before Malia Obama was supposed to intern for Harvey Weinstein? Why did the press decide to hop on this story now? Are they trying to distract us from the unraveling Vegas narrative? Are they trying to distract us from the death of the petrodollar? Let me know. I always look forward to your comments. Thank you all so much for subscribing and supporting my channel on Patreon.